is a slime mold. It's the largest single-celled organism on Earth and it can grow to more than three square meters. Scientists have recently discovered that these primitive life forms have some rather sophisticated talents. At Oxford University, Dr. Mark Fricker is one of a team of botanists and computer scientists studying a species of slime mold called Physarum polycephalum. For years, slime molds have fascinated scientists with their remarkable ability to solve simple mazes. Put food at the end of a maze and the slime mold will find the quickest route through. But scientists started to wonder if the mold could do more than just perform clever tricks. You can set them lots of little tasks and uh, you can allow them to forage and connect up little food sources to see what sort of network they would make. Okay. And a geometric shape, so a square or, a, or something more complicated, yeah. is interesting. But we wanted to see whether they would be able to solve a slightly more complex problem. Mark is recreating an experiment he worked on with colleagues at Tokyo University. He takes a blob of slime mold and then surrounds it with a pattern of oat flakes, an irresistible treat to the slime mold. What happens next is recorded by a time-lapse camera. The slime mold locates the oat flakes by growing out in all directions. But within hours, the slime mold shrinks back, leaving an intricate web of tubes that connect the oat flakes. It's these tubes that transfer nutrients around the slime mold. Incredibly, everything you can see is part of one single cell. It needs to build a network that's quite efficient to transport all those resources around. At the same time, that network mustn't cost too much. It right, mustn't take right. up too many yeah. of its own resources. And then the other problem it has is it, uh, it's going to be subject to damage. And so if there was only ever one connection, there's a risk that that would break. The slime mold takes no chances. It grows backup roots to make sure that its food supply isn't cut off. But there's something even more extraordinary about what the slime mold has done. Mark hasn't just laid out the flakes in a random pattern. The large blob in the middle is Tokyo. Right. And each of these food sources is positioned as one of the cities nearby Tokyo. So it's a, it's a recreation of the area around Tokyo. Indeed. So this is actually what it's based on. This is the rail network around Tokyo. And we can superimpose that over. OK, so we're in a line. That's it identical. It's absolutely identical. So you see a lot of these connections, it's formed the same sort of links. It's got a few extra ones in as well. It's a slightly more resilient network than the ones that the engineers hold, designed. Hold you, you, you're telling me, wait a minute, that this slime mold has built a b better network... It, it, a remarkably ...than the humans network. built. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Tokyo rail system is one of the most efficient and well-organised in the world. It took lots of skilled engineers using lots of brain power to plan it. Yet somehow, slime mold has achieved the same goal, how to efficiently link together multiple locations. Slime mold has also been put to work in other parts of the world. Here it tackles some of Britain's major motorways. And this is its take on the best routes around Spain. And here are some interesting alternatives to America's Route 66. What is the slime mold actually displaying here? It's a sort of smart behaviour. It hasn't got a brain, it hasn't got a nervous system, but it still seems to be able to solve these sorts of complex problems with very simple rules. And that's something that the computer scientists that we're working with are getting very interested in, in whether or not you can take inspiration from this system and apply it to other sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. 
So how does one of the most simple life forms on Earth, a single-celled amoeba that spends most of its time on woodland waste, match its wits against transport engineers and computer scientists? The clue seems to lie in its extraordinary biology. Professor Bruce Ng is a self-confessed slime mold obsessive. He's going to help me track down some slime mold in one of its native habitats. So slime molds are not rare things, are they? No, no, they're, they're, they're very common indeed everywhere. But, but overlooked? Overlooked because they're shy, not easy to find unless you know where to look and how shy to look. Shy slime mold. Shy slime mold, yeah. Do you remember seeing the film The Blob? Yes. A giant mass of jelly cr eating caravans. It was a slime mold. It was a slime mold. <laughs> <laughs> but not one we'll find but here. Not as big as that, I hope. <laughs> Bruce's 54 years in the field prove vital as we hunt the elusive slime mold. After half an hour, he finds what we're looking for. Not quite a sheet I was hoping for. No, indeed <laughs> not, but, uh, <laughs> but still, still there. the real McCoy. Yeah. <laughs> this small patch of orange is creeping slime mold. Up close, you can see how it's constantly pulsating. When one part of it finds something it likes to eat, it pulses more rapidly. Scientists believe that it's this pulsing that helps transmit information across the entire cell, allowing the slime mold to move towards its food source. These pulsations control where and how they grow across the forest floor, or even around the oat flakes of the Tokyo rail map. What's so special about slime mold is that it can use this information to make multiple decisions simultaneously. Pretty ingenious stuff for a single-celled organism. Slime molds are what's known as self-organizing systems. It's not a unique phenomenon in nature. Flocks of birds work in a similar way. With no leader, no overall control, the flock nevertheless acts as a single unit. But slime molds can do something that flocks of birds could never do. Meet the Fibot, the world's first slime mold controlled robot. The Fibot is the brainchild of Dr. Soichiro Tuda and Dr. Klaus Peter Zauner from Southampton University. Their robot takes its orders from a tiny blob of slime mold. I sort of don't believe you. I want to see, I, I, I want to see it working. Prove it. It's a two-off, it's a switch. So let's see it, it, it out. It just seems almost unbelievable. It's not instant, is it? It's, it, it's not sort of instant. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. The slime mold sits on an electronic chip inside the robot. As it transmits information around its single cell by pulsing, the robot detects these pulses and translates them into much larger movements across the surface of the table. How did you get the idea for for having a, a live organism inside a robot? Um, one inspiration source, obviously, from the Dal Daleks, from Doctor Who. <laughs> this is inspired by a Dalek? Yes. So it, well, it's the same thing, isn't it? You, yeah, exactly. You've got a live organism in the machine which controls it. The Fibot is pioneering a new approach to computing. Today's computers use a single central processing unit to do their thinking. But the slime mold has no need to ask a brain what to do. All parts of the cell just work together for the good of the whole. 
that simple organism inside processes information in a completely radically different way from our conventional computing technology. So we want to learn more how it can do that information processing. So slime mold could hold the secret to a revolution in computing or even the creation of artificial intelligence. Not bad for something you can find in your wood pile. <laughs>